The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain development of plot, subplot, conflict, character, and the role of the narrator where relevant. How do you decide if you like somebody or not? How do you choose your friends? How do you know if you can trust someone? If they are good, bad, or dangerous? We get information about people from their appearance, personality, and actions. From this information, we decide what sort of people they are and what their personalities are like. This is the same for analyzing characters in literature. Talking about a character in literature involves a bit of detective work. First, you gather all the information that you can from the text. Then you sort through it, putting the pieces together until you get a clear picture of what the people are like. These detective skills for analyzing a character are the focus of today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define character. Discuss how the author creates character. What exactly do we mean by a character? Let's define this term. A character is a person in a text such as a book, play or film. Before we go any further, we should add this component of short stories to our mind map. Tandiwa McClure is a writer. We asked her about characters. This is what she had to say. No, it is definitely important to sort of describe the different characters because the different characters in a story impact on each other. So um, one, the way one character behaves towards the other is obviously going to affect the story and, and how the different characters relate to each other. So if you are writing a story, you don't just say he was sad, you show through the emotions, you show through his facial expressions that he was sad, so you say his eyes were teary or um, he was looking down. Um, you see, if, if you show um, something in a story you don't just tell, then the reader can decide for himself um, what the situation is about. And it's also important to sort of that the personalities of the characters come through to make the stories more interesting. Um, just try your best to uh, explain the, the personalities of each of the characters as best, uh, to the best of your ability. That was interesting. So how do we analyze the characters we read about? How do we understand who they are and what they are like? Well, by looking at their appearance, which is age, dress, social class, and mannerisms. Personality, intelligence, attitudes, positive and negative qualities. Actions, the things they do and say in the plot. There are usually very few characters in a short story. The author does not have the time or the space to develop a whole lot of characters. In a short story, there's usually one main character and a few other characters. The focus is on the main character and the other characters are important only in so far as they have an effect on the thoughts, action and behavior of the main character. Let us sum up what we have said so far. A short story has few characters. One main character, other characters who have an effect on the thoughts and actions and behavior of the main character. So we, as the readers, pay careful attention to the main character and we watch the effects that the different characters have on each other. In this series of lessons, we are looking at the suit as an example of how to study a short story. But you can take the skills we are learning and use them for studying any short story, novel or play. By now, you should have quite a good idea of what happens in the short story, The Suit by Ken Timber. So today we're going to go deeper into the story to look at character. The first thing we need to do is make a list of the characters in the suit. Can you recall the characters from this short story? The characters of Philemon, Matilda, the lover, Mr. Mapikela, and the people who come to the party. Although there are not many characters, the story is really about Philemon and Matilda. The story is told mainly from the point of the view of Philemon, as he is the main character. 
in literature, the main character is referred to as the protagonist. The person that is in conflict with the main character is the antagonist. Now, we're going to look at the story to gather all the information we need to build a proper picture of the different characters. Let's start with the character of Philemon. This is how we are introduced to him. He grinned and yawned simultaneously, offering his wordless tedium to whatever gods for the goodness of life, for the pure beauty of his wife, for the strength surging through his willing body, for the even, unperturbed rhythms of his passage through days and months and years. It must be to heaven. From the writer's choice of words in this paragraph, we see that Philemon is basically a happy man. He grins and says a te diem, which is a prayer of thanks for his good life, his wife, and for his health. Everything that is basically right for his world. Here is the next paragraph from the story. Think about what it tells us about Philemon and Matilda's relationship. Breakfast. How he enjoyed taking in a tray of warm breakfast to his wife, cuddled in bed. How he enjoyed taking in a tray of warm breakfast to his wife, cuddled in bed. This tells us about Philemon's relationship with his wife Matilda. He is kind to her. He wants to make her happy. They seem to have a very good relationship. The story then continues, giving us more clues about Philemon. What can you work out about Philemon from this paragraph? He gathered and laid ready the things he would need for the day. The briefcase and the files that go with it. The book that he was currently reading. The letters of his lawyer boss, which he usually posted before he reached the office. Then he washed himself carefully. Then he dressed himself fastidiously. This paragraph tells us that Philemon works at a lawyer's office, that he likes reading and always has a book with him. The letters of his lawyer boss, which he usually posted before he reached the office. Then he washed himself carefully. Then he dressed himself fastidiously. We also know that he is very fussy about the way he looks because the text says that he washes himself carefully and then he dresses himself fastidiously, which means with much attention. Next, we see Philemon on the way to work. Here we can see how he interacts with Mr. Mapigela. He is friendly and sociable. He enjoys Mr. Mapigela's jokes and his company and is respectful, calling him dad. We also get information about Philemon from the way Mr. Mapigela treats him. Mr. Mapigela likes him and is concerned for him. He doesn't want to tell him the bad news about his wife. This tells us that the people in the community see him as a good man and feel bad for his trouble. Let's quickly review what we know about the character Philemon. Philemon is happy in his marriage and he loves his wife. He is proud of his home and himself. He has a good job with a lawyer. He's an intellectual who likes to read. He's respected by his friends and his community. Now, here is a tip to keep in mind when you are asked to describe a character from a short story, novel, or play. Any claim that is made about a character should be supported by evidence from the text. For each of the points we have just mentioned about Philemon, we would be able to give an example from the story that illustrates it. This would show that we haven't just made this info about Philemon. So where do you find this evidence? Well, a good place to look for information or evidence about characters is in the introduction and build up of a story. During the first part of the story, the writer introduces and establishes the characters and situations. So lots of information is likely to be given. But we also know that characters don't necessarily stay the same throughout a story. So you would also want to find some evidence from later in the story, after the crisis happens and the characters develop and change. Let's see how the character Philemon changes after he learns that his wife has a lover. It was not quite like the explosion of a devastating bomb. 
it was more like the critical breakdown in an infinitely delicate mechanism. From outside, the machine seemed to have gone dead, but deep down in its innermost recesses, menacing electrical flashes were leaping from coil to coil, and hot, viscous molten metal was creeping upon the fuel tanks. Suddenly, everything changes for Philemon. Everything that had seemed right in his life is wrong. The wonderful life and marriage he thought he had was all a lie. This causes a major change in him, which we can see from the writer's metaphor. Ken Temba compares this mental state to the breakdown of a piece of machinery. Like the critical breakdown, from the outside, the machine just seemed to have gone dead. When Philemon comes in and pretends not to see Matilda's lover, it seems at first that he's going to let the issue of the lover go without a fight. But then we see the completely new side to Philemon's character. How would you describe the way that Philemon's character develops in this next paragraph? We have a visitor, Tilly. His mouth curved ever so slightly. I'd like him to be treated with the greatest of consideration. He will eat every meal with us and share all we have. Since there is no spare room, he'd better sleep in here. But the point is, Tilly, that you will meticulously look after him. If he vanishes or anything happens to him, a shaft of evil shot through from his eye. Matilda, I'll kill you. This is the point in the plot that Philemon changes. All the kind and gentle actions of before are replaced with actions that are cruel and hurtful to Matilda. As the story continues, we see Philemon becoming more and more cruel. Look at this paragraph, paying close attention to the words which Cantemba has used. Matilda, he barked, our visitor. The sheer savagery with which he cracked at her jacked her up. But only when she saw the brute cruelty in his face did she run out of the room, toppling the chair behind her. Think of the words that are used to describe the scene and the connotations they have. The word barked tells us about Philemon's rough animal anger when he speaks to Matilda. Savagery. Philemon's voice is without compassion or any love. Cracked. His voice is sharp and violent, jerked. He causes Matilda to respond with fear, brute cruelty. Philemon is no longer the same man we saw before. He is transformed into a fierce and wild man, who she knows could be violent and dangerous. Let's look at some more phrases that tell us about the new relationship between Philemon and Matilda. We read that Philemon went on relentlessly when he was instructing Matilda how to behave with the suit. In other words, he pushed and pushed her to behave in the way that he wanted her to. He took no notice of her crying. He didn't feel any pity for her, nor did he soften in his attitude towards her. He also refuses to talk to her, but throws a cloth at her to indicate that she must do or dry the dishes while he washes. The writer describes his idea to take the suit out for a walk as malevolent, which means spiteful and mean. All this in the evidence indicates that Philemon is becoming more and more harsh in his treatment of Matilda. Have you noticed how different their relationship is compared to what it was like at the beginning of the story? Well, worse is still to come. We now have the climax of the story, the party that Matilda holds for her friends. This is where the public humiliation gets too much for Matilda. He became livid. Matilda, he shouted, get our visitor. Then with incisive sarcasm, or oh, are you ashamed of him? And every time Philemon's glare sent Matilda scaring to serve the suit each course. In the plot, the next thing that happens is that Matilda kills herself while Philemon is out drinking with his friends. He comes home drunk to find her dead. Here we see the final aspect of his character, we have seen him as the devoted husband. We have watched as he's become Matilda's torturer. 
And now we see him filled with sadness and guilt for the way he has treated her. In screwish anguish, Philemon cried, Tilly. Now we have a pretty good understanding of the character. We have gathered clues from the text and can put them together to create a picture of the protagonist. We have looked at the character of Philemon from the suit as our example, but you should be able to find clues about any main character in any short story and see how they change and how they develop as the plot unfolds. To see if you are able to work out what a character is like from the clues that you are given in a short story, it is time for today's task. Write a character sketch for Matilda that describes how her character changes through the story. Remember to support the claims that you make about her character with evidence from the text. In our first lesson on the short story, we pointed out that because a short story is generally short, the author must choose a limited number of actions. We have seen that these events will show us something about the main character. In the next lesson, we will look at how conflict is used for characterization in the short story. Until then, goodbye from me.